Hey, hi everybody. Here I am in my studio and I'm so excited because I've got like the goddess of all stand-up comedy, one of the greatest stand-ups that ever have walked on this planet, uh, Miss Phyllis Diller, and I'm so happy to have you here. I want to ask you all these questions that I've been wanting to ask you my whole life. Oh my goodness, and I hope I have a few answers. Oh, I'm sure you do. Well, I feel that we are so on the same beam forever, probably from birth. Yeah, we tapped into some kind of common thing, didn't we? Yes, we certainly did, because I think we were both born funny. So you were born funny? Oh, so were you. Yeah, I totally, I always wanted to be funny. Well, I guess maybe it was so natural a defense. Yes. I believe it was originally with me a defense. I would get me before they could. Yeah. So I've already done it. Yeah. So now they can't tell me I'm ugly. I already told them I'm ugly. Yeah. But there's something, There's. Some, I understand that too, and I did that too. You did. Yeah, but there's like such a vulnerability in that, like the building the wall, the little girl building the wall to kind of like just try to hang on. But it's because you're smart, right? Isn't it because you're smart? Guess what? What? There's no such thing as a dumb comic. That's right. That's man or woman, dog or cat. Uh, we are geniuses. We are pretty smart. We are very smart. Tragedy precedes comedy, creates. Comedy is created from tragedy. If there is nothing wrong, then we have no comedy. We have no place to go. I, I just was thinking that exact thing today. I was doing some interview with some London thing because I'm going over there and I want to ask you about that in a minute. But uh, I said, yeah, well, the, the, it's the darkness that makes things funny. The darker, the funnier. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the funniest joke in the world. Oh, I want to hear. Death. <laughs> it is a joke. It, it, it is absolutely. a joke. I always think that maybe just before you die, here's what you hear in your head. Wah, wah. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> it all ends up to be a, a big fat. Or what? It's kind of a trump, trombone. Trump, I, I, whatever. I often wonder um, about that thing, uh, death. But there's a, there are jokes about death that are so, they're the funniest. Do you, have, do you remember any right now? Yes, I do. I love to hear you tell one. Uh, well, I talk about... Uh, how uh, I would like to be a little old lady and live to be a hundred. And uh, and if I do make a hundred, I know exactly how I'm going to play it. I'm going to be a little white-haired old lady with a cane full of gin. <laughs> like, how else would you stay sweet at that age? Now, I may make it because my grandfather is 130. Are you kidding? Well, but, but he's been dead for 20. Oh, okay. And still at the head of the table. <laughs> I remember that joke. We can hardly eat. I mean, there is nothing that will kill a meal quicker than one person not enjoying it. <laughs> so we drink a lot. In fact, one Easter we were under the table looking for eggs, and it was Christmas. <laughs> but you, you, death, death, that's all built on the death of the old man. See, and you're laughing at it. Oh, it's hilarious I love still. that bit. Oh, my goodness. I remember hearing that bit, too. Not all of it, but I remember that he's still at the head of the table. Still at the head of the table. I told you when I was a little girl, I listened to the Phyllis Diller I record, know. and that joke was on there. Probably. And, of course, the greatest understatement, the, the joke that I'm proud of, was nothing will kill a meal quicker than one person <laughs> not enjoying it. <laughs> 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 Imagine that is so good. eight people sitting there and one old man dead, <laughs> and you're eating. I mean, well, I shouldn't have to explain it to myself. Should no, but I'm thinking about, like, the thought that comes to you to make you write the joke. Make it, well, that was all stream of confidence, confidence con consciousness. Yeah. I used to write pretty much like that uh, with a lot of hyperbole. See, that whole thing is hyperbole. Mm -hmm. Impossible. And, and But... Sell it, deal with it, and what do they call that thing in drama? Suspension of belief? Yeah, yeah. Right. And use it, use it. Take them wherever you want to go. Did you feel powerful when you're, I mean, you're, you're not doing stand-up so much anymore, no, right? I, no, not, not at all. I, I retired in 
2002, I think that's like six years ago. Yeah. And I haven't done anything since. How bad do you miss it? Do you miss uh, it? Uh, a funny thing, I, 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 uh, I've lost my chops, of course. Well, yeah, you've got to keep You lose your chops yeah. in one night. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that amazing? No one I knows took a what we're talking year, about. I took a 14-year break, and when I tried to come back, it was like, I'm Beginner. getting my chops back. It was, it was like starting nervous. completely over. Completely no idea. It all left. Absolutely, I know what you're talking it, well, about. Well, it's the like, it's same as being a, a pianist. You, uh -huh. you must play every day, every day. Unless you, it's like that kind of classicism, your chops and mm -hmm. your delivery. It's music. It is music. I remember you saying that, and I, re I read it in my early 20s. It is music. And I thought, my God, what a genius thing. You were conducting some orchestra. Well, I was playing piano with symphony orchestras. Of course, because that's all written down. you're a brilliant musician. You know, that's all written down there, you know. But when you're on your own, you're a stand That's why. But I remember you saying that stand-up is a, a, a music. There's a music and a rhythm to the, the flow of the words and how you time a joke. And, and besides, every audience is different. Every audience has new timing, That's right. the size of the room, the shape of the room, the people who are there, That's what right. is their background, what age, right. what IQ. Right. Every audience has an IQ. That's so true. I've had some very bright audiences and some very dumb audiences. That's you have to true. move it right into where they are or fail. Isn't it weird? Because like, you, there's no, there's no like real language to discuss what it is that happens when you're standing there and you're like in the act of communicating with a group of people. And like you say, it's different every group, but you know how to do it. You know, oh, I need to slow this part down and bring this word up. Or even you? leave out this one. Absolutely. They'll never get it. Absolutely. So why slow it, slow it down with the one that isn't going to work? And you're thinking all this stuff but behind remember, yourself. This, this is like being a pilot. Remember, you're in charge. Right. You're the pilot. You shouldn't be out there unless you're the leader. Mm -hmm. You know, there are young comics who come out and allow the audience. I mean, they allow themselves to not. If, if, if you would go out and ask a question, well, I'm thinking of the, the one that makes me sick every time I hear a young comic say, anybody here from Cleveland? <laughs> oh. yeah, you know, what kind of begging is that? <laughs> Anything that begs for applause or begs for a reaction uh, needs a reaction right away. Right. You should be giving them the reaction. Right. You're the, you should be the leader. Come out. Take over. Do it. And get on with it. Now, how hard is I mean, for me, I had you. And you know, uh, you know, I, I had a little Mae West in there. I had, you know, a little Joan Rivers in there too. But mostly, uh -oh. you were like the only one that I ever saw. So I mean, I kind of had a map made by you to follow. But geez, you didn't have any map. I no. mean, how did you? How did you do it? Experimentation every night. The hardest thing I learned was how to say hello to an audience. Oh yeah, I know. Well, that's yeah, why these kids come lines. out and say, Absolutely. "Anybody here from Cleveland?" Yeah. See, at right. least I didn't sink that low. <laughs> But the thing is, I realize it's, it's so important, that hello. And you can't just come out and say, hello. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I found with years of experience that I, if I related to myself, you're int literally introducing yourself. Right. You must disarm them because yes. if you're unknown. Right. You must disarm them because they'd really rather shoot you. Yes, absolutely. An That's unknown true. comic, oh, please. And I imagine a, a woman, too. I mean, they'd never seen anything like that. Well, it's like, what is it? <laughs> Get a stick. Kill it before it multiplies. <laughs> I was so desperate to get out and on that I would think, well, I'll just start right in the middle. Well, that didn't work. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, but uh, How long was it before you had the perfect opening line? I found that if I, I must relate to myself, uh, like what I'm wearing, mm -hmm. my hair, mm 